seven night cast. Rated number one in El Paso and Southern New Mexico. With Julia Hilder, Gary Warner, John Fawcett with weather, and Jeff Lindbergh with sports. Good evening and thanks for being with us. There will be no runoff for Northeast City Representative. A hand recount of the vote shows that former State Representative Arvis Jones is the clear winner of the race for City Representative of El Paso's Northeast District. Jones and incumbent Representative Jethro Hills waited this afternoon while members of the Elections Department conducted the vote recount. Earlier, Elections Administrator Helen Jamison told county commissioners that the race was clouded by undervotes and uh -oh. overvotes. Are the voters who punched more than one position on their IBM card, uh, the, no one gets a vote when there's more than the one vote cast. The undervotes are voters who voted for another office other than that district race, so they didn't vote in that race at all. Mm -hmm. The handout recount gives Jones 14 more votes, Hills half a dozen, and Stan Roberts Jr. an additional seven, but Jones remains the victor without a runoff. The city runoff is set for May 27th, and absentee voting opens next Monday. And the Sleda School District runoff is May 20th. Absentee voting starts Thursday. There can be no recount in yesterday's Panamanian election. Law there requires that ballots be burned right after they are counted, and allegations of vote fraud continue. Former President Jimmy Carter, who has been observing the election tonight, says Manuel Noriega is stealing the election from the people. Earlier, Carter had thought proceedings were going well. Armed men in civilian clothes today attacked thousands of protesters in an attempt to break up a march against election fraud. At least three people were wounded, including a television news cameraman, when 15,000 people joined the march to protest raids by General Manuel Noriega's soldiers, who allegedly seized thousands of vote tally sheets and prevented Sunday's presidential race from being tabulated. NASA's race to be number one in planetary exploration is back on track with the Magellan probe headed for Venus and Atlantis headed for its Florida hangar. The space shuttle landed earlier today at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Atlantis, Houston, understand we'll stop. Congratulations and nice landing. You've extended the shuttle's reach far beyond Earth orbit now. Commodore Magellan would approve. Last time Atlantis landed, there was major tile damage to the craft, this time only minor damage. Shortly after landing, the crew emerged from the capsule into the bright sunlight after spending four days in the dark of outer space. The unmanned space probe Magellan continues rocketing toward Venus, but won't arrive until August of 1990. The mission marks the first new U.S. planetary exploration in 11 years. Gary? Julia, convicted El Paso murderer Antonio Madrid will serve a sentence of life in prison for the slaying of a supermarket manager last year. After convicting the 47-year-old Madrid of murder yesterday, a jury in 34th District Court this evening chose to assess life in prison instead of the death penalty. A part-time janitor at the East Side store where the killing of 63-year-old Rafael Adame occurred, Madrid had been facing a possible sentence of death by lethal injection because the murder happened during the commission of a robbery. There are still conflicting reports about the identification of drug cult leader Adolfo de Jesus Constanzo. A U.S. Embassy spokesman says a fingerprint comparison positively identifies Constanzo as one of two men shot to death Saturday in Mexico City. Sarah Aldrete, the so-called witch of the cult, claimed after the gunfire and her capture that Constanzo ordered his own men to kill him when police surrounded their apartment. But U.S. agents say the leader of the ritual murder cult could have faked his own death. They want an FBI expert to compare fingerprints of the dead man in Mexico City with prints taken from Constanzo several years ago after his arrest in Florida for shoplifting. Shoplifting that is an obsessive impulse is known as kleptomania. Tonight, Nightcast's Roger Meyer offers help for those suffering with chronic five-finger discount. Any thief who wants property at McElligan Canyon's amphitheater will meet face-to-face -face with 24-hour guard and later, you have the nose for sniffing out potential illness. We'll explain on Dr. D. Orvato, Vinton, and Horizon City, this is New 7 Nightcast. 
Vietnam veterans who claim health damage from Agent Orange are about to get another chance for help from the Veterans Administration. A federal judge in San Francisco has thrown out VA rules on Agent Orange health benefits and ordered the agency to reconsider 31,000 veterans' claims. The judge says the VA was wrong to require the vets to prove a link between Agent Orange and cancer and should have given them the benefit of the doubt. If El Paso City Council agrees to pay half of the cost, a private security guard service will soon patrol McKelligan Canyon on a 24-hour basis. The mountain park, located in the near northeast part of the city, is under county jurisdiction. But the city and the county share operation of the Viva El Paso Amphitheater, which recently suffered extensive damage from vandalism. County commissioners today agreed to hire SR Security Associates to guard the park for $45,700 per year. But a ward of the bid is subject to the city agreeing to pay half of the bill. There are people who impulsively steal things without economic necessity. They're called kleptomaniacs. Tonight, News 7 Nightcast reporter Roger Meyer takes a closer look at this psychological disorder that drives some people to commit a crime. We have kleptomania. Doctors who've studied the disorder say a kleptomaniac will enter a store with no intention of stealing. But once inside, they're often overcome with a desire to take something, anything, even if it's some trivial item they don't need. And they will have an increase of tension just before they're taking the object. And then as they're taking it, they'll have a uh, subsidence of the tension. And it's that cycle of tension followed by relaxation that keeps kleptomaniacs stealing. But it's a cycle that can be quite costly. So what they do is they set themselves up for a loss of job, for lo loss of social status, uh, for loss of self-esteem, for humiliation. There is no such thing as a typical kleptomaniac. But doctors say one behavior that is consistent is the person's refusal to seek help. It's only after being caught that most kleptomaniacs confront the disorder. Probably the most direct way to treat people is to teach them how to be aware of the impulse and how to protect themselves when they're in a situation in which they might be vulnerable. Treatment also includes teaching people ways to relax. Doctors say the disorder can manifest itself at any age. And while experts are uncertain what percentage of the population suffers from kleptomania, one in 20 people caught shoplifting has a history consistent with the disorder. Roger Meyer, News 7 Nightcast. In just a moment, the problems and possible solutions by a local group trying to stamp out child abuse before many more youngsters get hurt. And a sculptor's bust of a controversial Hollywood actress isn't getting rave reviews. And in the weather, John? Well, there's better news. According to the weather charts, the ridge of high pressure that has been bringing us this heat is starting to break down a bit. A local group is working to eliminate child abuse in El Paso. Members of the National Conference of Christians and Jews have compiled a report detailing what they consider major problems and ways to solve them. The group will present their ideas to the Texas Board of Human Services tomorrow. They want DHS to change its policies to better protect the state's children. It can't really always protect the children. It also has to consider as an equally important goal maintaining the family. And a lot of the time, at least 40% of the time, those two goals are mutually exclusive. Ideas gathered at tomorrow's meeting may eventually lead to some DHS policy changes. Local DHS officials will also use some of the information to develop a local plan of action to improve services. Some museum goers in Austin aren't moved by one exhibit in which uh, is at the LBJ Library and Museum. A bust of actress Jane Fonda is one of 35 featured works in an exhibit called Biographies in Bronze. The display includes John Kennedy, Albert Einstein, and Pope John Paul II, but some visitors resent Fonda's presence, saying she committed treason in the early 1970s by visiting North Vietnam. Here's a person, a bust of a person, who goes and does just the opposite of what the young men who are protecting this country are doing, and talks against those people, and talks against our young veterans who, who were given their lives, and she's up there saying that they're the traitors. Museum administrators say their role is to exhibit American history, the heroes and the villains, so Fonda fits in whichever category you place her.
No controversy, though, weather-wise. It uh, was hot today. I think we can all agree. That's right. The first 100 of the season. And there are a few statistics to go along with that 100, and I'll show them to you right now. Not only was it a record for this date, previously that was 97 and 1895, but it was the warmest so early in a season. Previously, that was 99 on a May 15th back in 1978. And here's the biggie, the earliest 100 on record. Previously, that was a May 20th. That was back in 1969. So we beat that one by 12 days. Ooh, that's an early 100 degrees. And the normal for this date, 85 degrees. The normal low, 54. At least we were closer to that with a low of 53 this morning. Record low, 38 in 1975. No precipitation today, 1.45 inches, 1989 so far. And nothing for May. By the way, that record occurred at 219 and 36 seconds today. If you're keeping track of the exact time, we hit 100 degrees. Currently, under clear skies, 86 at the airport. Humidity down there at 9%, barometer rising. And the winds are out of the west at 9 miles per hour. Satellite pictures showing the eastern United States. Well, the east coast is getting a rest, but they're going to get quite wet a little later in the week. Here is a big system of thunderstorms moving through the south central states. Another area in eastern Colorado and increasing cloudiness along the west coast. There's a storm offshore. Let's take a look at that. There it is, and this is an area of rising motion threatening the coast of southern California. And that same disturbance will give us a slight chance of thunder showers by Wednesday and Thursday, as early as tomorrow night. Uh, that combined with the moisture down over Sonora and Chihuahua, Mexico. The national map with the uh, frontal systems superimposed on you. There we go. Cool air coming down out of Canada. See, this right here, this is a boundary. It's not really a front. It was causing a few thunder showers in the Gila wilderness earlier today. But behind it, a Canadian front with cooler air, that could affect us by Wednesday, making us less hot rather than really cool. But uh, further to the west, showers over California. This frontal system is causing a lot of violence. And we would put a severe thunderstorm watch out for Arkansas where large hail and wind damage to trees has been common. And then the jet stream, here's the center of that upper high, right over us. No wonder it's hot. Jet stream going way up to the north, but that'll be changing as the storm approaches from the west, and that high erodes away. Look at the records, most notable around 106 in Midland, 102 in Lubbock, 101 in Roswell, 110 in Phoenix. Most of this in our own neighborhood. Here are the national high temperatures for you. 24 in Gunnison this morning for the nation's low. 111 in Buckeye, Arizona, as well as Bullhead City, Arizona. Regional satellite pictures showing you where the thunderstorms are. The radar echoes over the clouds. Looks like it's all up north. But keep your eyes on this activity to our southwest. The regional forecast tomorrow. It looks like that front is going to get closer. It's going to try, cause a few thunder showers in the area, but I think they'll mainly be over the mountains. Here are the regional low temperatures this morning. At least we got a cool start to all this heat, but there are the highs for you. Look at that 104 in Carlsbad, a record 93 in Albuquerque, and the highs tomorrow getting up to uh, a little cooler, especially the further east you go. I think it will still be hot around here as you look at the low tonight in El Paso and Las Cruces, getting down to about 57. and. That's if we're lucky. That's if the winds drop off. But we've been lucky the last few mornings. Why not tomorrow morning? 98 for a high tomorrow. A few thunder showers around the mountains. <laughs> mountains? Okay, fine. Mountains. There are breezy west slopes Wednesday and Thursday. A little cooler. <laughs> Look at that. 90, 92, mm. cooler. <laughs> okay. Not much. No. <laughs> you know, I still can't uh, get over the fact that I think it's a prelude to a really hot summer. I, I sure hope not. And, and at least we might get a slight chance of thunder showers in a couple of days. Bad news for the mountains with their dry conditions, though. Whitening yeah. with little rain. Careful. Bad news. All right. Thanks, John. It's too hot to do anything. That includes playing football. Oh, maybe not. Nightcast Sports is coming up next. The market seems to be taking a breather. The Dow is down five and a half points after uneventful trading today. The world's largest convenience store retailer, Southland of Dallas, with about 7,000 7-Eleven stores in the United States and Canada, reports a record first quarter loss of $169 million. Southland's president says the company's revenues went up, but debt from its 1987 leveraged buyout erased the improvement. And Evan Wall, who resigned as El Paso Electric Company chief executive officer in March, will surrender his post as chairman of the board on June the 1st. Oh, this community a great deal. This community has given me an opportunity 
uh, to do something that very few people will ever have the opportunity to do. I came from a small town in New Mexico. My dad was a potash miner. Who would believe that I could go to New Mexico State, start as a night service clerk, and work my way up to chairman of the board? Why would I want to change anything? Wall started with El Paso Electric as a lineman 35 years ago. Well, they should have lots of time to go to the Diablo game. That's right. Now. And uh, they play tonight, and it's 10 cent hot dog night. That's right. Don't borrow any change from me. I spent it all tonight. Enjoy just, uh, just a few this evening out of the Dome. El Paso Diablos are back. Plenty of mustard, too. They're back out of the Dome this evening after a 10-game road trip where they won five and lost five and ended their contest with Arkansas five and a half games back of first place Midland. The Diablos, who had their trouble scoring runs on the road, got to work early at the Dome when Sandy Guerrero hits this home run to right with two aboard, giving the Diablos a 3-0 lead in the bottom of the second. Jamie Navarro kept the clamps on the traps until the sixth when Jesus Mendez hits a bad hopper past Frank Maddox. Ray Stevens scores. It was 3-2, but the Diablos added four more and go on to win it by a score of 7-3. Jose Canseco has missed all of the Oakland A's games to this point. will have his ailing left wrist operated on, even though that could keep him out of the lineup until at least mid-July. Despite the loss of their 40-40 man, the A's have the best record in baseball. One team that is staying close to the A's is California. The Angels were in Detroit where they hammered the Bengals for their fifth straight win and tenth in their last 11 to move to within a game and a half of the A's. Meanwhile, the Angels beat them 9-2. The struggling Tigers continue to do just that. The Rangers ripped the Yanks. Pete Cavilia with a dinger in that one. The A's Mike Moore won again as the A's beat the O's. Twins got a rare win over the Red Sox 4-2. Toronto snaps the hottest team in baseball's winning streak. Seattle at 6 and Chicago and Milwaukee were rained out. In Houston, Montreal had won only three games on the road so far this year, but thanks to Tim Raines' long ball in the fourth off Bob Nepper, his first of the year, Montreal went on to win it by a score of 5-1. to one. The Astros are in dead last place now in the National League West. Not a good start for new manager Art Howe. Jose Rijo shut down the Mets and Bob Ojeda 3 to nothing. Only two games in the National League tonight. Here's something for you UTEP football fans who love to go on road trips to think about. Athletic Director Brad Hovius is talking with San Diego State officials about a possible football game against the Aztecs in Hong Kong. Football coach David Lee told me today that the talks are in the early stages, but right now the negotiations center on a December contest against the Aztecs in Asia. We'll keep you up to date on those talks. Staying with the pigskin with temperatures in the record degree zones once again today, what better sport is there than football to test your endurance? As Fred Albers found out. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The sun raises the temperature to more than 100 degrees. The perfect time and place for football. Despite the heat, District 15A schools are in the midst of spring practice. When you see the weather report, it's going to be 100 degrees this week, and you're wearing, what, about 30 pounds of pads. Intimidates a lot of us, you know, but otherwise, you know, if you don't really concentrate on it, it won't affect you, really. Did the kids say anything about the heat? Do they seem to mind? Well, we didn't let them, you know. I don't talk to them about it. We just tell them there'll be plenty of water and let it go with that. Coaches do take extra precautions in this hot weather. The players are free, in fact, encouraged to come over to the sideline and get a drink of water. The perspiration drips off helmets, and in the heat, a player can lose as much as 15 pounds of water weight per practice. Everybody else is celebrating, kicking back, getting ready for their senior year, getting ready for summer vacation. You guys are out here practicing football. Hey, that's a penalty there. We got to pay for it, and we enjoy it. That's a good thing about it. Many believe practice in the spring heat can lead to victories in the cool of the fall. Fred Albers, News 7 Sports. Boy, it was hot out there. NBA's best six man is Eddie Johnson of the surprising Phoenix Suns. Johnson, who averaged over 20 points a game, was the pick over Utah's Thorough Bailey and Mr. Showboat Dennis Rodman of the Detroit Pistons. Finally this evening, the final day of racing on at Sunland Park, featuring the Sunland Park Handicap. And as Bill Donati tells us, Raffetta won it. Raffetta has held them all at bay. In second, must go. Duck is racing second. Now on the outside, Curabo is charging up to challenge. They drive in the final 16th. Raffetta on the inside. Curabo on the outside. Won't make it. It is Raffetta to win the Sunland Park Handicap. Oh, I'm going to miss Bill. He's done a great job for us all year, and uh, that voice, we won't hear it anymore until later this fall. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. You have to get out to the strike more often. Maybe you can this fall. Okay, way. thanks, Jeff. Right. Still to come on Nightcast, Dr. Dean noses around to find the link between smell and your immune system. And calling all fish on Herman's Pond.
I'm Ted Koppel. Coming up on Nightline, the charge in Panama is massive fraud. The question, whether General Noriega is stealing the election. We'll talk live with former President Jimmy Carter, who is in Panama, monitoring the election process. The fans of the late comedian Lucille Ball got a chance to remember her this evening. Ball's family arranged Roman Catholic masses in New York, Chicago, and a Los Angeles suburb at the same hour when Americans were used to seeing Lucille on television. Masses began at 8 p.m. local time. In medical news, your sense of smell can bring many good and bad feelings, but as our own Dr. Dean reports, your nose might also be made to help the body fight disease. Anyone who's ever smelled something that's reminded them of mom's home cooking knows that the nose can be pretty powerful. But now, long after Pavlov, the concept of conditioning might be making a comeback. Now, Pavlov proved that you could get a dog to salivate by ringing a bell because in the past, every time you fed the dog, you rang a bell. Well, it turns out that smell can be conditioned in the same way, and the schnoz has already been used to lower blood pressure and lower heart rates. And we think that's a conditioned reflex also. Well, now doctors have found out that the immune system may be able to be conditioned to sensory responses. Researchers exposed mice to the strong smell of camphor for one hour. Kind of smells like mothballs. Then they gave them an injection of a substance that stimulates the body's natural killer cells. Later, some of the mice were re-exposed to the camphor without the injection. The scientists found that those mice had an increase in their levels of killer cells. Another study by the same team, as yet unpublished, found that smell stimulation in conjunction with a special anti-tumor agent worked better than the anti-tumor agent alone to slow tumor growth in laboratory mice. So while no one's ready to replace conventional medicine with scratch and sniff cards, the research may explain one of medicine's major miracles, chicken soup. I'm Dr. Dean Adele.